Right, let's get to Steve Eisman. He is known, of course, for predicting the 08 housing market crash. And now, big short investor Steve Eisman is questioning the market's rally stamina just as earnings season is about to get started. He joins us now. Steve is now the senior portfolio manager at Newberger Bourbon. Steve, it's always good to see you. Thank you for having me. What do you make of the markets? We're sort of all, you know, scratching our heads mm. a little bit. The volatility in the bond market, the rally we've seen in tech. Um, I think everybody, including me, has underestimated how much institutional investors were underinvested at the beginning of the year. Everybody was, as one of my partners likes to say, this is, one, this is the most anticipated recession that so far has never happened. And so people are chasing. It's starting to feel a little manic, but it could go on long, quite a bit longer because as long as the economic data is okay, I don't see why people are going to sell their stocks. It's funny when an institutional investor says that, inst that the thing that you got wrong was underestimating how much institutional investors have been <laughs> invested in the market. <laughs> were you also underinvest? I mean, were you sort of bracing for something really terrible to happen? And do you still believe that it will happen? Or are you saying, you know, things actually look much better? Well, I think we came into the year fully invested. You know, we did better last year than the market because we were somewhat defensive. We're not quite as defensive as we were. But, uh, like, I, I would admit that I'm surprised about how much the market has gone up this year. I really am. Are there shorts in the tech sector then if things look manic? I don't talk about individual stocks, <laughs> but thanks for asking. Yeah. <laughs> well, in the sector itself. <laughs> um, I think it's too hard. Bubble. It's too hard. I mean, even stocks where I think the, the companies are not even going to last, the, you know, the correlations between all these companies that have very high revenue growth and negative earnings is almost one. So it's not really stock picking, it's like group picking. You know, last year those stocks were all down 75 to 90 percent. This year they're up like 40 to 50 percent. But you know, when you go from 160 to 10 and now you're 14, mm -hmm. looks good on a percentage basis, but it's not so good if you've owned it long term. Yeah. So what kind of economy are you investing in? What's the backdrop to your investment when it comes to, you know, what you expect the uh, economy to give you? Is it a recession? Is it a soft landing? And, I mean, at this point, I'm, I'm agnostic about it. I mean, the data is still very, very strong. The Fed keeps raising rates. It hasn't had an impact. You know, until it has an impact, I'll just say we'll keep chugging along. So what are you chugging along with? In, uh, in I mean, it's a combination rate. of some tech, very little financials, mm -hmm. um, a lot of it we're focusing on doing a lot of work on infrastructure because the amount of money that the government is pouring into it is almost unimaginable, and it's going to last for at least 10 years. Tomorrow kicks off bank earnings. We're not going to play individual names, but banks are interesting here. And No, they're I'm, not. Well, that's, they're not my, that's my point. So the regulation is coming. Capital requirements are going higher. The environment suggests they're not going to be, the earnings are not going to be nearly as robust as the valuations suggest. So I'm not saying short, long, but are banks important here? Because I don't think they're particularly interesting either. I don't think they're interesting, and I don't think they're important. I mean, People own J.P. Morgan because they're hiding in it. It's by far the best bank. Uh, I, the regionals are problematic because they keep losing their deposits and have to keep reducing their balance sheet. So I, for the regionals, I don't think earnings have bottomed. Um, and I wouldn't even think about buying them until I thought that they had. You know, you could traffic a little bit in the larger banks. But the problem is that uh, Michael Barr, who's vice chair of financial supervision, just said that he's going to raise capital requirements for the large banks by 20% which would take ROEs down by 100 to 200 basis points. There's an irony in this, by the way. All the problems that happened in the banks were in the mid-cap banks. The large banks, because of all the regulatory changes, were fine. So what do the regulators do? They go fight the last war, and they're raising capital requirements of the large banks. Uh, why? I mean, th there's absolutely no reason for it, but that's what they're doing. So if you look at something though, like a JP Morgan trading at 10 times, uh, 10 times earnings, I mean, to me, it seems like it's discounting a lot of things like additional capital requirements and, you know, some maybe some other bank problem down the road and maybe the economy not doing so well. So it seems to me I actually think it's attractive here. It is attractive, but it may be the only stock in the entire group that's attractive. I mean, if I had to pick one stock where I would say the earnings estimates could probably go up, it would be J.P. Morgan. But I think every other bank, probably in the country, the estimates are going to go down. So, you know, it's hard to play a group where nobody wants to own it, but you want to own the best stock. You know, I wouldn't argue with anyone who wants to own J.P. Morgan, but I just think the, the entire group is problematic right now.